I believe we are still live here from the Strata Conference, and with me I have Alastair Kroll. And of course, if you've been following the Strata Conference, you all know Alastair because he's one of the chairs. Uh, so thanks for coming by. No problem. And I wanted to tap into something you mentioned earlier this morning about how people are really interested in not just taking uh, discussions about the technologies on their own, but also the applications of them now. Um, can you speak more about what you're hearing or seeing here about that, Count? Sure, so I think one of the most important things that we've seen happen in the last 50 years is a shift from the where the locus of innovation shifted from uh, the military and the government. You know, back, back in the 60s and 70s and 50s, computing was about either throwing things at people, uh, throwing people at things like moon landings or uh, counting the census and, and counting things. Very much government locus of innovation. From the 70s to the 90s, the locus of innovation was enterprises. So you saw a lot of network protocols like IPX and Vines. You saw these uh, mini computers and a variety of desktop operating systems that happened. In the last 10 years, the locus, since the advent of the web, really in the, the, the widespread web, the locus of innovation has become consumers. So it's a real democratization. What that means is that these technologies, which used to be applied to businesses, are now um, often applied to consumers first. Um, a business person, a CEO, has a much better insight into the state of his friends on his Facebook feed than he does into the state of his sales team on a business platform. And that's a, that's a scary thing because the innovation has shifted, but those guys are still buying tools and technologies from vendors who think like enterprise vendors. So briefly, what happened is that um, we're now seeing people say, I've got a business problem, can I solve it with technology? I mean, I can do that on Facebook or Google or Twitter, why can't I do it in my company? And that's a shift where instead of saying, here's a technology, how do we apply it? We're saying, here's a business problem. Is there some technology that can fix it? So that flips things around a little bit. And oftentimes, uh, if you're working as a carpenter, you sometimes grab a tool and see if you can something, find something to fix it. This is, right. the, this is the classic trying to um, you know, use a hammer to fix any given problem. Um, how are people applying data science to solve some of the modern business problems you see right now? Um, well, it depends widely across industries, but traditionally, it's been the vertical application. So, how do I find minerals that are closer to the surface? How do I identify a new strain of flu so I can figure out how to protect against it, whatever. Um, now people are saying, well, you know, that's not actually what I spend my day doing. If so you ask me what I do for a living and you look at it by what I spend my day doing, I do email for a living. There's no doubt about it. That's what I spend 80% of my time doing, right? Um, if your job is HR or it's supply chain optimization or any of these things, there's almost certainly a way to bring data to bear. Uh, and I've long maintained that strata is actually about more than big data. Because big data is a nice buzzword, it explains a bunch of concepts, but to me what's magical about the strata idea is the convergence of big, openly available data we can crunch easily with new interfaces by which we can explore and visualize that data interactively rather than just quarterly reports, and uh, ubiquitous computing, meaning everyone's always connected both as a sensor and a recipient of that data. And when you marry ubiquitous computing um, the uh, democratization of that stuff, um, new interfaces so that anyone can understand it, and new uh, openly available data sources, uh, all kinds of cool stuff can happen. I think people are looking at that and saying, I got this business problem, can't one of those things help me? Uh, and that's what I'm hoping we'll explore in the coming conferences. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing more about that all week long here at the Strata Conference. Um, I know we'll be hearing more from you up on stage. Uh, one thing that I have to bring up since I have you here uh, is this uh, post that you wrote, uh, there's no such thing as big data. Um, and the, the, you know, the caveat in there is that if you can't apply it. Um, can you talk a bit more about the conversations that evolved from that post and the context for it? Sure, so the title is Complete Link Bait. In fact, uh, when Forbes ran it, they changed the title for that reason, I think. Um, but I do think that, that this idea of having all this data and being awash in it without actually applying it to a real business problem is a good one. There are so many obvious questions that nobody asks, and even though the, the effort in asking that question is trivial. I'll give you a concrete example. Um, oftentimes in business discussions, we sit down and say, oh, well, maybe we should do this. Should we? Let's ask our customers. Okay, Bob, go survey our customers, and in a month we'll have that report. If your customers are all using some application, you can contact them immediately. You can sit in the meeting and say, what do the customers think, Bob? Bob runs that survey, gets information from those always connected, easily responsive, easily interrupted customers. You have the answer. You just shorten the decision-making cycle by a month. And so the old idea of tabling something or setting up a subcommittee to decide kind of evaporates. So uh, I'm a big fan of a book called um, Why Things Bite Back by Edward Tenor, I think, about the unforeseen consequences of technology. In that book, he talks about how football players were supposed to be safer because they had metal helmets, but of course you put 
angry men in metal helmets and make them run at each other, you get lots more injuries. Um, the computer was supposed to give us a paperless office, but of course uh, it resulted in much more paper because now everyone was a desktop publisher. I think big data will have a number of unintended consequences. The way in which organizations make decisions will change. Uh, something that we're going to touch on this afternoon, but I'll give you a little bit of, of preview. The modern method of management hierarchy is based on the rail race, railway systems because it turns out that you couldn't effectively manage a railroad of more than about 50 miles without things falling apart unless you had management hierarchy. So uh, I don't the, the gentleman's name escapes me, but a guy who'd learned from the military how to apply management hierarchy applied it to business, and that has been the model we use for managing companies for over a century. It came from railroads. That goes away when you have a flat organization where anyone can communicate to a customer and a, a customer can communicate to anyone. So two-way interactive stuff instead of one-way broadcast stuff, completely flattened organizations, changes how we will make decisions. And I don't think we can even predict what the consequences of that will be for business people. How you hire, how you decide, how you fire, how you talk to customers, all of that is up for grabs because we've flattened the world but it's taken a while to seep into enterprises. And the next 10 years are gonna be an absolute roller coaster ride. And I think it's a sea change for business administration, which is why we wanted Jumpstart to really focus on this because uh, there really is no such thing as big data unless you change your behavior as a result of it. That sounds like about as good a setup for the afternoon as I could have asked for, Alistair. So uh, thanks for coming by. Um, we're going to turn over the live stream and say we'll be back at uh, 1.30 for the afternoon's program. You can follow Alistair at acroll, and again, that uh, Twitter hashtag is straticonf, and uh, you can read his post at radar.oreilly.com. Thank you. We'll see you at 1.30.